The jury is out, and Debbie Hines joins us to discuss what's going on in the closing statements in the Derek Chauvin trial. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Hines, I am DebbieHines.com on the internet. I am Debbie Hines on Twitter as well. Debbie, a uh, trial lawyer, legal political commentator, former prosecutor, former assistant attorney general of the state of Maryland. Debbie, welcome back. What's going on in the Chauvin trial today? I see that the uh, defense is at the, at, the, at the moment making their argument. I only caught a little bit of the prosecution argument this morning, so bring us up to date. Okay, so we're almost ready to give the case to the jury. It's been over three weeks, over 35 witnesses, and here we are. So the prosecution, just so you know, the prosecution goes twice in any criminal case. They go once, as they've already done, and then the defense gives their closing, and then the prosecution speaks last, and that's because they have the burden of proof. So the first hmm. time that they were up at the bat speaking, um, you know, they started off, I think, in a really good way, making George Floyd... Um, human. Uh, they show pictures of him growing up and his family and just to create that this is what this is about. He's not on trial, but this is what we are seeking murder charges for this man. So they did a really good job of just starting that out as opposed to going, you know, directly into the law and second degree and manslaughter and everything. And then I think that what they wanted, what they did, they wanted to just give the jury themes. And so the theme that they gave them, and this is almost verbatim, is what you saw happen, happened. I mean, meaning, mm. don't let this defense come up here and tell you that. Don't believe your lying eyes. What you, his words were exact. Right. What you saw happen, happened. And so that's, you know, the first theme. And then one of the other interesting things that they came up with, as a former prosecutor, we never do this, generally speaking. Um, people always ask, well, why did someone do that? Why would they have murdered the person? Why did they commit that crime? And in a, in a criminal case, you're not required to explain the why, but they brought that up because that is a question that jurors and uh, lay people really want to know. And what he said was he did it because he did it on purpose. That is the why. He was just because he could. He did not have to listen wow. to the bystanders telling him to get off of his knee. He did it because of pride and ego, just because he could. And that brings it clear, though that's not an element of the crime, but it makes, you know, it gives the jurors back there something to talk about in support of the verdict. And then we get, went into what are the actual elements of the crime. He's charged with three um, uh, three crimes, murder in the second degree, murder in third degree, and with manslaughter. And just, you know, none of those require intent. Uh, they're not first degree. They don't require that he intended to kill Mr. Floyd. But second degree is the only, the distinction is second degree is committing a felony. So the act that you did that caused the death of someone, you committed a felony. And the felony that's committed, the state is alleging, is a third degree assault charge, which in Minneapolis, Minnesota, is a felony. And then under, and it carries the, the Second degree carries the highest. It carries 40 years max on the jail, whether you get it or not, it's 40 years. And then third degree manslaughter, the distinction is not a requirement of a felony having been committed to cause a person's death, but just the, the fact that you were callous, that you um, disregarded human life, and that substantially caused, you know, was a result of that person's death, substantially, whether in combination with anything else. And manslaughter, which is the lowest charge that they discussed, is really just negligence. I mean, you didn't yeah. intend to commit the person's life, you didn't do anything really bad, but you you know, negligence was caused. So they got off the elements, but they basically let the jury know that it's up to you. I mean, but do not, do not let the defense say you cannot believe what you saw happen, happened. Right. Yeah. Which the defense is no doubt going to try to do. If the argument that the prosecution made today spoke to motive, you know, basically he killed him because he could, um, doesn't that argue for, for first degree murder? But it's not a first, you know, it's not a first degree murder case. I realize that's not one of the charges. I mean, I've always said I think they could charge a first degree, but here's where the prosecutor did not charge. Um, and we can go back and forth what we believe as progressives and, you know, African Americans and other progressive people should have charged. But sometimes if you overcharge, meaning you don't think you can get the conviction, 
on the highest charge, a lot of times the jury will not come back with a conviction on any charge. So it's like a fine mm. line there, and you charge what you know you can get the conviction on because if, if you don't feel that the jury in your jurisdiction, and that's what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with the people across America. We're dealing with the people that won that jury in Minneapolis. If you don't feel that they would, in your estimation of prior cases that you've tried, would, com- would convict that officer of first degree, then you run the risk that they would come up with the not guilty or they would come up with the home jury. So they just tried to do what was the safest thing, despite what myself and others believe that they should have done. Debbie, we just have a couple seconds left. How do you expect this to shake out? Nobody knows, Tom. I mean, nobody knows. <laughs> I, I, nobody I, knows. I, want, I want the highest verdict of second degree, but nobody knows for yeah, sure what will happen. It seems so slam dunk. I just, you know, it's, well, it's going to be interesting to see. Debbie, thanks again so, so much Thank for sharing you, your expertise and your experience with us. It's great talking with you. Debbie Hines, I am DebbieHines.com and also on, uh, on Twitter. Thank you, Debbie.